Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Yes, that is that is exactly what it is. That is topless Joe Hart in the background of the videos. Yep. Welcome back. Apologies about the lighting today. The light is shining right on one side of the face. They're going to have to deal with it for today. Um, but we're back today to talk about some more Celtic transfer news. Another exciting day to start off the week. Yesterday, we had that bulletin type video where we spoke about so many different things. Today is sort of similar. Going to touch on a couple of stories and we're going to expand on one from yesterday's video as well. So if you haven't seen that, feel free to go check it out. Keep yourself up to date. But thank you very much for the support on that. A great way to start the week. Um, difficult times as we all know but hopefully enough news to keep us going and today's news is especially exciting so I'm looking forward to talking about it I'm looking forward to talking about one man in particular and that's Cameron Carter Vickers before we go any further with the video, please make sure to drop down below, hit like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We are now over 34,000 subscribers, so let's try and get on our way to 35,000 subscribers. I thank you all, as always, for the support you've given me, but let's keep it going. Let's keep pressing those buttons down below if you haven't already. So Cameron Carter Vickers, the big man himself, one of the uh, best players um, of the season we've just had there, the 2021-22 campaign, he was a player of the year nominee and I think aside from Callum McGregor, most folk are in unison in saying that he was probably the next best option when it came to player of the year, consistently great throughout the season from the minute he stepped into the team to the last kick of the ball, he was just fantastic and we've ranted and raved umpteen times about him so I don't need to kind of reinforce the same points that I have in, in so many different videos. I've made videos titled Why Celtic Must Sign Carter Vickers. I've made videos updating you on the, the Carter Vickers situation and in those videos I've said the same thing every time. It's almost like the Jota situation, you know what I mean? It's like we, we know what the opinions are now and we know ultimately the, the only thing we have to say is Celtic should be signing these players, both Jota and Cameron Carter-Vickers. Um, they're two very strong players, two players who bring a significant amount of quality to our team. And I think they're two players that will be important both for our domestic success in the coming years, but also for our European success, our hopeful European success in future years. These are two players who I think can make the difference and help us reach a level that competes with other sides in Europe, that helps us compete with teams who have significant quality. Because these are players of significant quality and ultimately I think they're two players, Carter Vickers and Jota, who could be playing for teams in a higher European competition. I don't want them to be, I want them to be staying at Celtic but they could be playing in the English Premier League, they could be playing in the La Liga, they could be playing in uh, the Bundesliga, they could be playing in any of these leagues because they are that good for top top teams um, but Celtic are now in pole position to land both of them and the update on Cameron Carter Vickers today is a very, very exciting one. So first things first, Tottenham Hotspur, the parent club, of course, of Cameron Carter-Vickers, the club that we are looking to sign him from, have apparently set a date for the player and set a date for the potential transfer for the player so that they can now look at other options if he chooses not to come to Celtic. Don't worry, we're going to get on to the more exciting news in a moment, but just to be clear, we are apparently getting till the 15th of June to get everything sort of tied together between the club and the player, um, and hopefully by then we'll have a, a good idea and hopefully we'll have official word that he will be joining Celtic. Why have they set this date of June 15th to get everything done? Well, other clubs are interested, and as I said, there are teams in the Premier League who are very interested in bringing Cameron Carter Vickers to their club. Everton are apparently in the fold now, Fulham and Bournemouth, two of the newly promoted clubs, all looking at the possibility of signing Cameron Carter Vickers and of course Cameron Carter Vickers himself played for Bournemouth when he was on loan there a couple of years ago. So you know there is clubs that are interested, there are clubs who would love to take his services but Celtic of course are the ones that have given him that sort of, um, I would say that platform now in his career, Celtic are the ones that are offering him European football and Celtic are the ones who are offering him the chance to win trophies, not any of that will be done at Everton or at Fulham or at Bournemouth, you know, relegation is ultimately what he's going to be fighting against if he moves to any of those sides, so 
I think that right now we are in a very strong position to be the favoured club to join and, and, and rightly so. You know, let's be for once let's be cocky, let's be the, the English side for once, you know what I mean? Let's have that sort of entitlement. Um because I feel like any player with half a brain should be choosing the likes of Celtic. I, I know that money makes a massive difference in these situations, but you look at Everton, Bournemouth and Fulham and you look at three clubs right now that aren't very desirable to play for um, when you put money aside from it. So Celtic are in a really good position, but not that we need to worry about it because the news that has come out alongside it is very promising in itself. As always, I'll use that famous phrase, take it with a pinch of salt, whether it be Saxa or, you know, sea salt of any kind, just take it with a pinch. Um, Cameron Carter-Vickers apparently is ready to state at Celtic. This was the quotation that was in the Daily Record today, and I know everyone has their sort of uh, doubts with the mainstream media and the Scottish newspapers, and rightly so, but this is what they had to report on the Carter Vickers situation. They said, Carter Vickers has agreed personal terms with Celtic, and the Hoops now have three weeks to conclude a £6 million deal with Spurs before other clubs can make their move. Record Sport can reveal the defender who was a rock at the heart of the Hoops defence during his spell on loan last season, has his heart upset on staying with the champions long term but the clock is ticking if Celtic want to exercise the option written into the loan agreement which would see them shell out an initial £6 million to secure his services. So it's good to hear that apparently Vickers has agreed terms, he has got his heart set on Celtic. Those are the sort of phrases that you like to hear. They're the sort of phrases I'm not exactly stunned to hear because I think everything pointed towards the direction and that's, I say take it with a pinch of salt and, and you know maybe be cautious and believing things that certain articles and certain publications might say, but I, I, I really do believe in this one being, you know, the, the kind of the full-on information that we need, and you know, you could just see it in Cameron Carter because I think that he was he was intending on staying here, and we're lucky we're in that position. We have that wrote into the own agreement that we get to talk it out, we get to agree something before other clubs can come in. Um, so that's very handy, um, and hopefully over the next couple of weeks, as I said towards the start of the video, we hear a little bit more about it, and we we hear that he's going to sign for the club permanently. Um, I'm very buzzing about it all, uh, to say the least. An initial £6 million was the language used in the article, which would suggest to me um, that we are going to pay more than £6 million, but I've said before, this is a guy, I know he's only got a year left on his Tottenham contract, so you should be maybe looking for uh, maybe a, as little a deal as possible in terms of money, but he's a guy who comes around every once, once in a blue moon, you know, we don't see many centre-halves of this quality at Celtic. We need to pay money. I, I'd imagine the deal will probably be close to around £10 million when it's all done and dusted, um, as the reports have suggested over the last few months, which is fine by me because I would pay I would pay £10 million up front if I was in charge of Celtic and I was in charge of this transfer. Um, he's a brilliant player. He's someone who we shouldn't let go. I think it was one that we'd, we'd regret if we let go. So hopefully, yes, we, we get the deal tied up. And, and to me, the funds for this transfer don't mean anything. I, I couldn't care if he's got a year left on his deal. Um, this is someone that Celtic need to keep at the club and he's going to be really important for what we do in the future and he, he must buy into Ange's vision, he must buy into the the, 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 the idea that it's Celtic in the future um, under Ange Postecoglou and it's as many players like that as we need and he, if he's really willing to be a part of that, then pay the money. I mean, if you start the transfer window with both him and Jota signing on permanent deals, I think it really sets the tone for the next season in Scottish football. Um... There's another side in Glasgow who are going to have to play catch up, and that's the reality. You know, the the, the coin has flipped as well and truly 180 degrees turned it this season. Last year we had to play catch up, we had to make all the signings, we had to be in that position. This year it's Rangers' turn, um, and Rangers have got a lot of quality to catch up on. Uh, so you know what, we're in a good position, uh, and signing those two would be massive. And yesterday, if you watched the video, you remember when we spoke about Jota and the Portuguese publication Abola um, talking about, you know, the, the transfer of Jota and how he's practically, their words, practically signed for Celtic. There was a second half of that article which brought up the name, uh, I believe, Francisco Ortega, the Argentinian, Argentinian fullback who Celtic are apparently interested in, a target who has emerged for the club. Now, I've seen a couple of articles now that have linked us with the, the, the left back from Argentina. Tina. And it's one that's particularly exciting. You know, we don't sign many Argentines at Celtic, um, so it's always nice to see some come through the door. And uh, I, I, 
you know, it's, it's a bit of news that I didn't really expect, but it's one, once again, take it with a pinch of salt. It really just came out of nowhere, but it would explain um, the numerous options that we'll be looking at for that left back position. The reality is there isn't going to be just one player like uh, Giza, um, the the boy from Hammerby. There's going to be many options that we'll be looking at, and and this could simply be another one of those. So whether or not this is like a a sign that Celtic are really going to push for, and this is one that we really are going to try and get over the line, or whether it's just someone we have kept an eye on, that's unclear. But apparently, it is a target that, that Celtic have been looking at. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I watch the Argentinian Premier League um, because I don't. I simply don't. So I know absolutely nothing about the guy. So don't even ask. Uh, all I can do is research and read. And from everything I've managed to do so far, I've built a vague image of, of what we would be getting. Um, it was Stephen McGowan who broke the story in the Daily Mail about the, 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 the link with Celtic. But he is someone who has been playing a lot of football recently for his side over in Argentina. Currently plays for very is Sarsfield in the Copa de la Liga, um, the first tier of Argentinian football, and he has a contract that expires in 2024. So you're looking at someone who still has a couple of years left in his deal. He's valued quite highly, I believe, by his club at the moment. Um, and only 23 years of age, this is someone with a, quite a prospect um, of a character and quite a, a kind of big potential you could say within him and his club so he's someone who I think that the club would be looking for a few million quid for put it that way I think we're talking a decent transfer fee but he's played 80 times at the left back position um, so far in his career but making uh, I think 97 senior appearances one goal 10 assists for the club um, he's someone who you know let's let's see how it goes he's made two appearances for under 23 level at Argentina as well so you know that's a really really strong position to be in if you're playing for the under 23s for one of the best footballing nations in the world a very positive looking prospect for Celtic so we'll see if anything else comes out about it but I thought it's one that I'd keep you um, up to date about um, as long as we sign a left back this summer I don't mind if it's him if it's Mohaned uh, Giza uh, I don't mind who it is as long as we get someone in the door I apologise for the constant flickering of the eyes to the to what will be your right hand side, I believe. Um, trying to look at my notes for someone I don't really know much about is hard. <laughs> trying to not look at them, you know. Um, but yeah, that's about it for today. Big news on Cameron Carter Vickers. Hopefully, we see that come over the line. That would be very, very good. Um, and as always, my opinion means as much as all. But here we are. <laughs> right. Make sure that like and subscribe if you've enjoyed. I'll see you all next time.